Shall I render to our Jehovah? He has done so much for us, saints of God, as we come this morning. Amen. We greet you all one more time in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. And for those that are online today, we have a part of the world. We welcome you and we pray, God, that you will receive a mighty blessing today out of the service, that healing will take place, and amen, your need will be supplied by the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's worship God with us this morning. Glory to God, because when the praises go up, saints of God, now the blessing will come down. Expect a mighty blessing from the hands of God this morning, because he is able. Hallelujah. Our first song this morning, oh, glory to God, is creating me a clean heart. Hallelujah.
and speak to him right now. So One more time, let me hear you ask to create in your clean heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Talk to Jesus right now. Let's talk to Jesus right now. Restore within me the joy of salvation so that I may worship you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. I'm here to read this morning's lesson, which is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 16 and reading from verse 1, praise God, to 20 to 13. Please stand if you can, for the reading of the word of God. Amen. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the, of the town trembled at his coming and said, Camest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves. Amen. Come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked at Elab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his statue, because I have refused him. 
For the Lord saith not as man saith, for God looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shuma to pass by. And he said, neither hath the Lord chosen this. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, ye keep up the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the, uh, the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. We honor the word of God by raising our hands and say, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Saints of God, just look at where you are this morning. Just look at yourself and, and tell yourself, I am chosen by God. Hallelujah. Don't look down on yourself as, a, as you are just, you're just a simple person. Just tell yourself this morning, I am chosen by God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Man, look at you and said, well, then maybe you cannot do this and you cannot do that. But you know you're standing with God. Hallelujah. And God knows you. Hallelujah. He knows your inside out. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, tell yourself this morning, I am chosen by God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And just before our prior leader come this morning, we're going to worship God again. Hallelujah. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remember what the Lord has done for you. Blessed be the name of Jesus. When he decided to give up his life on that Calvary's cross for you and I. Hmm. Glory be to God. Think of it this morning, saints of God. Would you do that for your, for your children? Glory to God. But God sent his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And his son never resists. Say, Lord. Amen. Here am I. Hallelujah. Just for you and I, that we can have a, a, a glory to God that gives us salvation. We can have a chance to enter the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Without him, without that blood, without that sacrifice, we have no hope at all. But God seed fit to send his only begotten son, hallelujah, to die for you and I. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the depths of your heart right now. I want you to stand with a meaning in this morning. Hallelujah. that you had been on our side. 
Where would we be, O oh God? We acknowledge your majesty. We thank you, King of Kings, for your mercy, for your grace, for your love, and for your awesomeness. Hallelujah. I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 14. Verse 14, it says, The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely I have thought, so it shall come to pass, as I have purposed, so it shall stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, and on my mountains tread him underfoot. Then his yoke shall be removed from them, and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed against the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out over the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed it. Who will annul it? His hand is stretched out. Who will turn it back? Let's pray this morning. If you can, please stand. Let's just honor and respect God as we pray today. If you can't, it's fine. But if you can, just stretch up your hands and just pray that, Lord, Father, we come to you today. And Father, as your word says, oh God, you said, these mountains shall be removed. I don't know what it is that you're going through. I don't know what mountains you face right now. But begin to lift up your hand and say, Father, according to your word, Father, you said, the mountains we will tread under our feet. Father, we pray today that every mountain of sickness, we command it to be moved. Every mountain of disease, we command it to be moved. Every mountain of infirmity, we command it to be moved. Every mountain of lack and poverty, we command it to be moved. Every mountain that is against the people of God's mind, every mind binding spirit, every mind controlling spirit, every spirit of heaviness and depression, we command you to move right now. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over your mind over your heart, over your soul. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. Begin to declare that my mind shall think the thoughts of God. That I begin to declare today that every mind controlling spirit, every spirit of suicide, whatever the enemy may want to witness or begin to say in your mind or your head, we command it to bow in the name of Jesus. For the word of God says you have come to receive life, not death, but you will live to declare the glory of God. Father, we pray today that let there be sound mind. We speak sound mind right now. Over this auditorium, sound mind. Over everyone watching online, we speak sound mind. In the name of Jesus, we decree mind, oh God, to be free. We decree that, Father, every burden, every heaviness, whatever the enemy has unleashed in this time and season to oppress the mind of God's people. Right now, we plead the blood of Jesus. We reverse right now everything that the enemy has used to bombard the minds of the people of God. Right now we break all mountains. We shatter them with the blood of Jesus. We decree victory right now. We decree wholeness right now. We decree healing right now. We decree deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. Wherever you are lacking right now we decree in the name of Jesus that you will lack no more. You will lack no more. You will lack no more. In the name of Jesus, begin to declare today that I will lack no more. Whatever it is that has been attacking my body, whoever it is that you know that is sick, that has been suffering right now, begin to decree in the name of Jesus, that let the blood of Jesus begin to bring healing, bring deliverance, bring change, bring turnaround in the name of Jesus. We decree, oh God, by the power of the blood of Jesus, that we will lack nothing good. We will lack nothing good. We speak healing and deliverance right now. And the word of God says God has purposed to bless us, to heal us. And there's no power from hell that can annul it or stop it. We pray right now that God stretch forth your right hand right now and bring healing, oh God. And turn back the hand of the enemy over everyone that is listening this morning. In the name of Jesus, whatever the enemy has done, we undo it today in the name of Jesus. Father, stretch your hand for healing. Stretch your hand for provision right now in the name of Jesus. Every mountain must move by the power of the blood of Jesus. Every agenda of the enemy, we turn it around in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray that you open our eyes that we may see what you are doing in this season. In the name of Jesus, we pray that, Father, our eyes 
eyes will not be despised. Our eyes, Father Lord, will not despise what we need to see. Father, the way, oh God, you blessed, oh God, the people of old, oh God, that Father, out of nothing you created something. Whatever is in our hand, we speak multiplication. Whatever is in our hand, we speak increase right now. What is it that you have? Begin to pray that God will bless it. Whatever, whatever it is, it doesn't matter how small it is, when the Spirit of God breathes on it, that thing can be multiplied and become something that is great in your hand. We speak for multiplication today. Multiplication over your finances right now. Multiplication in your spiritual growth, in your prayer life. Multiplication in your household. Multiplication with your children. Multiplication with your grandchildren. Father, we speak increase and blessings today. We decree that we are not going home the same. Stretch out your hand and bless us, oh God. The Father, we will go home changed. We will go home healed. We will go home delivered. We will go home transformed. Father, we will go home free. That every burden that we brought into this place, we drop it at the altar today. Everything that has been troubling our mind, we speak the freedom of Christ. We speak the freedom of Christ. We speak the blood of Jesus today. That every burden must be lifted. Every bondage must be broken. Every mountain must be moved. Every challenge must be solved. Every problem must be lifted because we believe in the name of Jesus. Every power of hell must bow in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the burden carrier. Carry every burden today. Lift every load today. Remove every oppression today. Remove everything that is not of God. Every darkness. We speak the light of God. The light of God. The light of God. The light of God. Let it penetrate every darkness in anyone's life today. Let there be a change. Let there be a turnaround. Let there be a shifting in the name of Jesus. Father, bless the children of this house. Bless the marriages in this house. Father, we pray none shall be broken. There will be no divorce, no premature death. Seal every marriage, oh God. Protect our children, oh God. Let them grow and be taught in the ways of God. Father, we pray that you pour financial blessings that will lack nothing good. Spiritual blessings, emotional blessings that we will be made whole. That we will be made whole in the name of Jesus. Oh, Shanda Baba Sakarabosha. Wholeness, wholeness, wholeness in the atmosphere. Wholeness, wholeness right now. Whatever it is that you came with that is not of God, that is contrary to the will of God. Right now, we speak the blood of Jesus to begin to flush out everything that is not of God in your system, in your body, in your mind, in everything that concerns you. The power of God the anointing of God the life of God let it begin to flow, let it flow, let it flow in the name of Jesus let it rain let it rain, let it rain in the name of Jesus and we're going to pray for our loved ones right now in rounding up in the name of Jesus we're going to pray for the Lawton family on the passing of Doreen Duffus in Lawton, is it Lawton? Sister Juliet Blake and family on the passing of their son Jason the families of Sister Martin, Brother McClary, Sister Audrey, and those who are going through bereavement. We might not be able to mention every name, but Jesus knows you. The Holy Ghost knows you, and he's the one that will touch you where it hurts you the most. And we remember Sister Ruth and Elder Hay, son James, Brother Ashman, we speak healing in the name of Jesus. Sister Susan and all those that are not well, we speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for these names that we've mentioned, and you can add your own names there, whoever you know that needs prayer. Let's pray. The word of God says, if my people could humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven and he said he will heal the land Father heal the sick today heal and comfort those that are going through bereavement right now in the name of Jesus we pray we pray for divine shifting divine turn around oh God let your presence, your power your anointing flow in this service today and Father we know that we are going to have an encounter with you your presence is what we need this day speak to us oh God and change our lives like never before and the people of God say amen blessed be the name of Jesus blessed be the name of Jesus
Glory to God. God is able, saints of God. God is in this place this morning to do what you want him to do. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Just before we get into our giving this morning, i just going to brought back your attention to the scripture that's read this morning. Amen. 1 Samuel 16, uh, amen, verse, reading from verse 11 right there. And you ask yourself, look at yourself and say, I am chosen by God. Hallelujah. When man gave upon you, God seed fit to go to God to lift you up. Hallelujah. 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, <clears throat> follow me right here now, saints. Are there all thy children? Hallelujah. When Jesse bring forth all his children, hallelujah, glory to God to Jesse. Amen. Those are strong and maybe be older than and, and the little one that he cast out into the bush. Hallelujah. But is there another one? Is there another one? And Jesse said, there remained yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth what? The sheep. Send him away over there to look after the sheep. He, maybe he's, he's thought, well, then he's not qualified. Amen. To stand with the others. Send him out, out there to look after the sheep. I am chosen by God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for he will not sit down. Hallelujah. Glory to God, till he comes hither. And he said, Hallelujah. And brought, and he sent and brought him. Now he was rooted. Hallelujah. And what? With hell. Of what? Beautiful countenance. Why that man send the boy a bush? <laughs> he, remember, he's not ugly. He's beautiful. Not only because he's young. Why? Oh, God of heaven. Amen. And goodly to look at. My God, look at it. He said he's goodly to look at. Oh, handsome boy. Beautiful. And, amen. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. For this is he. Look at yourself. I am chosen by God. I am. Man might look at you. You might not be able to speak as, you know, as the others. Hallelujah. But I am chosen by God. Hallelujah. He said, glory to God, said, I said to, said to um, Isaiah, I chose you even hallelujah, from your mother's womb. Oh, glory to God. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. How oh, did the, the others feel? To see the youngest. But what God said, the heart, the heart is genuine towards me. And this is my chosen one. Oh, glory to God. Let us stand one more time, saints of God. But remember from today, look at yourself and say, I am chosen by God. I am chosen by God. Hallelujah. I am chosen by God. Touch your own self and say, I am chosen by God. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you as we come this morning to give a portion of what you bless us with. Father, I pray that we stretch forth your hands from heaven. Blessed, sanctified, Lord, yes, that we use to the honor and the glory of your name. Right now, every glory to God at hand that stretch forth to give. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that we bless your children right now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Please follow the direction of your ushers, and we're going to sing this song this morning. Israel
are the gods ready, almighty creator, alpha, omega, beginning and the end. Holy, holy, Lord God almighty. Yes. Oh, glory to God. We pause that is and is to come. Amen. God's worthy, almighty creator, Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. Holy, holy, Lord God almighty, which was and is and is to come. He's worthy, God's worthy, you Lord just tell him right now nobody like you Lord no one can supply the needs of my life but you nobody like you Jesus hallelujah glory be to God glory to God amen 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 nobody like you Lord hallelujah 
and the Lord provides for you. Remember, 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 remember. Throw it at God. Just tell him to worship you. Without you, I have nothing. Throw it at God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. To worship you. Remain in the spirit, saints of God. Hallelujah. Let nothing, let nothing dampen your spirit this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. In Jesus' name, I now hand over to Overseer Vaughan right now. In the care of the Holy Ghost. Stand at the anointing. Amen. God bless you, Minister Reed. God bless you, sir. Saints, Mother Vaughan, your lovely dear ones, the worship leader. My God bless you, Hallelujah. musicians. Every single one of you today joining us online, where you are. I salute you all, especially you pastors, leaders who have to lead the congregations where you are. We really stand by you in Miracle here in Bedford. God be with you all, and we will stand together and rejoice in the Lord. I don't know if you realize, partners, today that we wouldn't have a, a meeting like this if you were not here. You are the people who are important. You have come to celebrate the love and the goodness of God to you. So really speaking, in retrospect, you are special. God loves you. If you realize the amount of calls that are coming through now daily and sometimes, well, of course, over the week, course of the week, the people who are caught up in different things then today you wouldn't wait for anybody to ask you to hold up your hands and give God thanks, to be able to be still moving around and uh, breathing freely. We have to thank God for you, especially knowing that with so much happening around you, bereavements and other things, that you're still finding time to come to celebrate Jesus. Now we salute you. Come and give God a good hand for you, for this is for you. This is especially for you, for you. Uh, according to the report that Satan sent out is that you shouldn't be here today. And even if you were here, you should be carried paralyzed, crippled, blind, hopeless, poor, broke, good for nothing. But God has gone above that and say you're untouchable. 
I thought you would celebrate God for that. But you are untouchable. You are untouchable. And uh, we found now that um, when we pray at midnight, and the mom and myself, we especially thank God for the Holy Ghost. But we really appreciate him for allowing his angels to be watching over us. He said he has given his angels charge over us to keep us. Now, if they don't do it right, they have to report back to God. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to walk around with any dangerous weapon to protect yourselves because you have angels watching over you. And I believe that calls for a good celebration that you are safe. You are safe. You are safe. There is no evil, no evil that can befall you. And no plague can come near your dwelling. Isn't that something to celebrate? I think that is that really is something to celebrate. I'm gonna be as concise as I can. I really don't come with a message today. I just come to thank God for you. And then after all, if I didn't do anything else, if we just pray and go home, then that's enough. But please remember, we are here just to thank God for who he has caused this house to be, amen? I know I have a few things to just mention in passing. And I'm trying to do that the way, the best way I know how. But if I miss somebody, if I miss saying something, then, then don't sit back straight and say, you didn't call my name. Stand up. That's what the church is about and said, I am here too. Amen. Because you are somebody. We don't want to read. Well, forget anyone. But I remember the time when my children were sitting the next row to the back. We're sitting in the front here, and I'm praying that from next week they'll be back in their seat in the front. Give them a hand for me. They know who they are. And I have some little ones, some little ones that used to come and greet me. We are my little ones. Are, are, are they still around? That's right. Are they still around? Tell them I miss them. Now, also, before I forget, before I forget to remember, I have two beautiful young ladies, promised they were coming all the way from London today, and I said to them not to be late. I, I don't know why, but my eyes keep pulling over this side. I don't know if they're on, are they on this side? Oh, come on, stand, let us celebrate you. Yay. Yeah, do it again, do it again. That's good. They, they come all the way from London to have fellowship with us, but in having fellowship with us, they, their father has passed away two weeks, three weeks now, and Thursday I will be in Luton by the grace of God to do the funerals for their father. And I want you to pray for them, lovely young ladies, you want to hear them speaking on the telephone. God, you thought they were touching the roof. But we welcome you today, and thanks for coming. God bless you. Now you can be seated. Amen. We, we also have here today young family. Well, of course, they're planning. And um, of course, Mr. Stewart, stand and wave at us. Uh, you, yeah, and your little daughter, that's all right. Good. They are here, but we, we must not also forget that oh, two weeks ago, we celebrate here this beautiful wedding. If you didn't get to come, you must have seen it online, and that was the wedding of the year. <laughs> Amen. And with the young couple, Mr. and Mrs. Singh, just stand and we celebrate them today. Amen. 
Come out here, come out here, come out here, come out here, and come up here now, and uh, you look, uh, you want to say something to the congregation, you want to say anything? Good morning, everyone. Yes. Um, it's a pleasure being here today, and two weeks ago I was right here very nervous, but I did feel like I was guarded and protected <laughs> by obviously Yvonne here, who led us beautifully um, on that day. And I must say thank you to everyone who supported us on that day. I really appreciate that. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And she spoke for her. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Uh, already I am in serious trouble. Some of our loved ones who I want to mention, but as you know that tomorrow, Minister Martin, stand and wave at us down there, so we appreciate you, man. Celebrate him for me. Celebrate. Amen. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming. No, you will appreciate the fact that tomorrow, 12 o'clock, we have here a funeral service and uh, this is very important for you and for me only a few weeks before this young man died we were talking together and he wanted to make sure every plan all the arrangements were properly in place for his father and uh, that was it. And it was strange while he was thinking, he was only about 38, 39, while all the arrangement was being planned for his father. And he was planning it and making sure that his father is going to have a good send off. And so, just so happened that about two weeks after that, he died. And uh, while you're planning, others because of age, and I don't blame you because I'm 84 plus now, and if you plan for me, and I, I have a, I'm having strange visions, I'm an old man, now I shouldn't be standing before you, but uh, the Lord said I have to carry on till he comes. So if while I'm ministering here to you today, and he called me, please don't even try to resuscitate, to resuscitate me, I am longing to go. I know I'm going somewhere. So don't try. Just celebrate me. Don't get jealous because I'm gone. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. And I'm going somewhere real. So please remember that don't plan, only plan, because others are older than you are, and they are going. An old saying we used to have in the Caribbean islands that the the old must die and the young may. Then you notice it's different now in many aspects because a lot of people that I am so happy to be the one committing their bodies to the ground are much, much younger than I am, much, much younger. And the strange thing about it is they are far, far more knowledgeable, educated, and so on. Um, than I am. But the strange thing about it, again, is that some of them have gone, not leaving a legacy. They die with that book in them. They die with that record, that tape, that, that, that legacy that God has given them to give to the world. They're taking it back to the grave. That's why they said the grave is still the richest place on earth all the knowledge, all the wealth that God has given you, you have taken it back. The professor, the professor was dying, he called Overseer Bruce and he said he has one regret, one real regret, and that is that he has had his education. And may I say this before I forget, that if you, if you have it, if you are learned it, pass it on, amen teach, if you have it, teach, and if you have wealth, pass it on, then just give. And he said now he's taking it back to the grave, and that is his regret, because he realized that heaven is real, 
and that hell is real. And he also said, now this professor said something that maybe will help somebody today because it helped me. He said that if the resurrection of Jesus Christ wasn't true, then something went wrong because 12 disciples Judas sold him. And he said, 10 of them die saying he is risen. One died at an old age and only because death had no power over him. That was John. He was thrown before Nero's wild beast and they could not kill him. He was put in a pot of boiling oil and that could not consume him. He was abandoned completely on the island that is called Patmos and they, that could not devour him. And at an old age, when he was carried into the church, his message was still the same. Beloved, let us love, for love is of God. This was the disciples who said, I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. You have to know that you know. If nobody else thinks so, you are the person whom God loves. You're not hearing me. I mean, God loves you. Thank you for that, man. That's why I want you back in the front line. Amen. Last week, we have our little granddaughter here who was blessed, and uh, we were taken somewhere, and stand mom, grandmother with her. And so she walked past her mother, she walked past everybody, and she came to me, and she spent her time. If you don't see me with a lot of hair on my head today, she was biting it or kissing it all off. So she owned that. Thank you very much. And so it was like that. So what I'm saying, beloved, amen, pass on what you have. The blessing is in the passing on, amen. I know that there are lots of you that I should have called upon today. Anybody here new for the first time? I see a lovely couple at the back there. They're sitting next to Minister Martin. I don't know if I stand and just tell us who you are. All those people who are new today, just stand with me. I don't know. Amen. I'm not knowing saying they are new, but... That's it, man. Who is it? Oh, bless you. They are brand new to me. <laughs> bless you. Give them a good hand again. Right, thank you. That is on you. I know. I know. Keep standing with me, sir. Now, and you are new, ma'am. Can you tell us who you are? And uh, that's it. Amen, man. First time. Well, celebrate her for me, celebrate her. Thank you, thank you. Oh, God bless you, ma'am. Somebody else down there. Oh, bless you. And you're here for the first time? Celebrate him for me. Now, keep standing, keep standing. Now, brother, call son, stand. Stand. You stand, sir. And sister, uh, Sister Rose, stand. Can you come quickly up here? Now they're celebrating their anniversary today. And come on church, stand with them and celebrate them for me. Come, come, celebration. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Amen. I mean, I think you could come up here. You're not going to say anything, but come let everybody see you online. Now, I must say, this young man, if I were to give a certificate in faithfulness, I would give him because he has been faithful. And God bless you. Celebrate them. Did you want to say anything? Not really. You don't want to say anything. Or you don't want to say anything. Thank God that he's blessed us. Um, because we've got that for five years. Please pray for us. Yes. That we may see many more. Amen. God bless you. And nothing, man. Amen. All right. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. While you're still standing, don't sit yet. 
while you are still standing, I'm going to ask you now, well, somebody left this on here. Was it the moderator? What well, is for you, sir? God bless you. <laughs> Whatever is left on here. <laughs> I don't know where you got it from that you couldn't come to church and laugh. Just laugh. Because you are blessed. Amen. Uh, and I don't know, even with a mask on, you should be still smiling. But while you're standing, you're going to be pointing hands at me because I want to be able to just reason with you for a few minutes. But these few minutes should be on divine revelation. And it, how many of you know that? Yeah, Sister Rose will tell you she's a nice lady. Uh, but even in the garden, you go and you see lovely roses. But God, be careful how you hold it. Amen. So if you point your hand at me today with your need, then God will speak. Because I really didn't come to really shout at you today. I just come to love you. But God knows that you need something. And I don't want to keep you back too long, just for the next few minutes. God Almighty, speak to us that we may leave here, Lord, really challenge to love you some more. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Now, please take your seat if you can. Now, what I'm saying, what I'd like to just say to you here today, is that the Lord dropped a word in my spirit a few nights, evenings ago. We were here on a Tuesday evening. And then when I, sh the Holy Spirit helped me to share this word, I'm going to be praying for somebody. This is quite serious, but it is common words, simple words, and uh, you will pray with me. It is that you've heard the, our minister already, and God bless him. He gave us a message. Not only that he moderated the service, but the Lord gave him a revelation, and he imparted that revelation to us, that God does not look on the outward appearance. He looks at their heart. And they are deep. That was so profound. That has so much to offer to us that you can know that you're somebody. Don't let anybody give up on you. You're somebody. God knows who you are. A matter of fact, and if you were nobody, people wouldn't just thought, try to reject you and put you down. It's because people are jealous about you. They are not jealous about somebody who is nobody. So therefore, don't be offended or hurt because somebody don't treat you right or so, or they're jealous about you. That should make you celebrate because then that should know that you are somebody, amen? amen? So what the Lord put in my spirit, it was simple. And uh, I think to today it will be just so as the Holy Spirit will have me to share with you, and then we are going to pray. And it's Matthew 5, and just reading just one verse, verse 6. Matthew 5 and verse 6. To those of you who, who thought we were going to finish even online at 1.30, or 12.30, or 1.30, by the grace of God, we may be going on until about, well, a little later than that, but not after one. Let the Holy Spirit say it differently. But Matthew 5, and that is one verse, verse 6. Matthew 5 and verse 6. And of course, you will read it for me. And if you don't mind, if you, I don't want you to stand and sit, but in reverence to the word of God, you could stand and let us all just read that one verse together if you don't mind. Those who feel mind, you remain seated, but for the, the word, the sake of the word and the power that is in the word, then you must stand for me. Amen. And that is to tell you, my, my man who should come early to sort me out, well, he came early, but I came out early, so from this week he will be here early to make sure it, we don't have to do this again. So forgive me online. Amen. So it says, so can we read one, two, three? Yes. 
God bless you. That's all. Please be seated. As, as your pastor, I am in serious trouble. And I want to confess it to you. One of the conflicts in life is that um, if, if you learn, teach, if you have, give. But the greatest conflict that I have and battles that I have with me at this moment is feeding people who are not hungry. In the church, we can come and we can call this building church if we want to. But it's not the church. It's a place where we come. We are the church come together to celebrate Jesus. Just a building, but we are the church. And the, the strange thing about it is that us as pastors uh, seems to have gone into the entertaining get blessed business. Amen. I love you, Sister Bev. Wave at me, daughter. Amen. Thank you. In this get blessed business that if we don't come to church where somebody can motivate us and make us feel like somebody, we are not coming back. But, you know, I have seen people, and pray for me, who have gone to big time, five stars hotels with great friends, you know, all dressed up. And on their way home, they stop at the fish and chip shop, uh, at the Kentucky or the McDonald's, because although they have just spent um, lots of money for, you know what I mean, five course meals, they are still going home hungry. And sometimes we try and, uh, to satisfy people but if you are not hungry, it makes no difference. Amen. False is always thick. We are love is thin. Can I say that again? False are always thick. We are love is thin. Doesn't matter how you dress yourself up and make yourself looking good. Somebody don't like you anyway. It's either that the tie wasn't straight or the hair was not parted right or you know what I mean? Well, real love is thick. The wife could try all she could to prepare the meal. And when you come home, especially if you ate somewhere else, you're finding faults. But when you're really hungry, you're not going to ask Amen. Which pot that meat was prepared in? Am I right, sir? Thank God. Somebody is with me. You have to come every Sunday, sir, because you're with me. You know what I'm talking about. But then the strange thing about it in the church, we have become such a place where we are trying our best to entertain people, and they are going home not blessed. It should not be so. It is a fact that when they came to Jesus, some even tried to stone him. But at the same time, some are going home with their miracles. You're not hearing me. They come with a desire. Hear Jesus saying to blind Bartimaeus when he was crying out, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now Jesus knew everything about this man. He knows all about him. He, Jesus saw when he told him to come. He saw when he threw away his walking cane, his begging bowl. He saw when he threw away the mat he was sitting on. And he was coming with a desire to be healed. Yet when he came to Jesus, Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you. If he wants a few pennies, well, he'll give it to him. 
But he said that I might receive my sight. That man was hungry for his sight. For 38 years, the man was at the pool. What was he waiting for to be healed? He said, every time I step in the water, somebody stepped before me. But for 38 years, he consistently waited for that angel to trouble the water for his healing. If you notice last two weeks, especially last week, what happened in Afghanistan, there were rich, knowledgeable, prestige people, people with prestige job positions, and some of them with a passport, three or four papers showing, but it makes no difference. They were being pushed back. They wanted to leave a country, although they had everything there. But this time, they were uneasy, restless, because they don't know for the climate what is going to be next. And all they are hoping for to God, if they could just get out. You know, that's it. They are hungry now to get out. So desperate people will do desperate things. How do you know that a church is not hungry for God? Go to the prayer meeting. See how many want to pray. See how many want to reach out. Amen to God in prayer. When really this place should be called not a church, but a a place of prayer. Not just a singing place and a place where we just try to run about, but where we come in and talk with God individually, even if nobody else is here. You're hungry for him. Look with me very quickly on the beatitude. Said, blessed are those, amen. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Amen. Blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. But tell me what is number one. What is the number one? Sorry. Only two people know it. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The reason why Matthew stressed heaven, Matthew was talking to the Jewish people for your sake. And what he was saying, why he used it, whether he said, why why Matthew referred to the kingdom of heaven so much more than the other writers is simply because he was writing to the Jewish people. So whether he did say the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God means the same thing. But Matthew was so conscious. Pray with me, somebody. Matthew was so conscious of the word God that he would rather use heaven than God. Same thing. Amen. So therefore, he said then, blessed are what? The poor in spirit. You see, what happened is we have become so rich that it doesn't matter what happened is even if the pastor had prayed her heart out today, somebody would be there to say, I could pray better than she can pray rather than knowing her connection with God. Help me, somebody. And we'll be ready to pray with her for a blessing. But come on. Here we have then the beatitude, which is really what he's saying is our attitude. Now, if we are going to have that desire for God, for the kingdom of heaven, then what we should have to remember then He went on to say after that, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. But then when he came to the next blessing, he said, blessed are those who do hunger 
thirst not the righteousness, for they shall be filled. When you were today, please get me for this. When you were today still turning in bed, some of you in Bedford, these two young ladies were running to the train. When you today were wondering what time to go to the bathroom or so before you get ready to come to the church, this man was on the way. And he had no right, if you're hungry for God, he had no right to be coming from MLM stage before us in this area. But it's a fact. While we were here, this young, beautiful young couple, they were coming all the way from the other side of Sunday to get here. I told you that this wasn't a prepared message. I have to go where the Lord is leading me. For at the end of the day, you're not going to meet Paul or Peter at the judgment. They don't know you. They don't know you. The Bible said, I'm not going to tell you where the Bible said, you must pray for me because at the end of the day, I have to give account to God for you at the judgment. Not Paul, not Peter, not Samuel, not Elijah. I have to give account for you. So the quicker you get mad with me and don't come back, the less account I have to give. But if you are here, I have to tell you the truth. And it doesn't matter whether you give me something or whether you don't. I'm not here for gifts. But I'm here to speak what does said the Lord. He said, if you're hungry for God, glory to God. If you're hungry for God, he'll fill you. And when he said fill you, He's not talking about just give you monetary coin. He's talking about fill you with all the blessings. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 13, all of it. He's going to fill you with Romans 12, Romans 8, amen, 28. Everything He's going to work together for your good. And you love God. Amen. So here we have now the good attitude. But then in Exodus 20, Moses gave them the law, he said. And God said, and here under the law, pray with me. Here under the law, gave them 10 of them commandments, civil commandments. As I said, this is not prepared to pray. Civil commandments. Every single one of them carries the penalty of death. Every one of them carries death. He said, thou shalt love the Lord, thy God. Thou shalt love the Lord. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto you any graven image of anything likeness. That is in the heaven that above, is in the heaven above, or that is on the earth, or the beneath. earth beneath, or that is in the water, that is the, the water earth. under the earth. Thou shalt, thou shalt take. next one, next thou one, number two. Take that, your time with me. Thou shalt not take. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord the God name in vain. of the Lord God in vain. I think we have gone a bit after number one. What is number two? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Amen. Thou shalt not take the, the, the name of, of the Lord, Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold thee guiltless. For the Lord will not hold you guiltless. Take it his take name in the vain. the name of the Lord in vain. Remember to keep. It says here, now remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Well, all right, that's all. Keep it holy. Now, of course, we are confused, some people said, about days. I was confronted with a, a knowledgeable man, and he kept this, 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 this Sabbath was Saturday, and he said, 
it must be a holy day, how you must keep it. And he was penalizing the Christian for not having worshiping on Saturday. And rather than going into any um, altercation with him, I said to him, God bless you, sir. You can keep Saturday as holy as you like. But what will happen to you if God come on a Sunday? It's not about days. It's about, I'll come back to what you're saying, it's about a God who cares about you. You could keep a day as holy as you like, but unless you honor God, unless you know him, and unless you are living a holy life, it does make a difference. Come on with me, somebody. And then he went on to say, there, you shouldn't bow down yourself to anybody, anything out there or serve them. For God is a jealous God. He saves us and we have to walk worthy of him. Are you getting anything out of it? Amen. The next one he said, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the living with the Lord your God give it to you. This is the only commandment with promise. Amen. Then he changed from there and then he said, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, shalt not steal. steal. Thou, shalt, thou not shalt not bear false witness. Bear false witness. Against thy neighbor. Last one, thou shalt not covet. Thy neighbor's house. Amen. Whatever anyone has, right? So we come back now to Matthew 5, he said. Right? Well, the sixth one, he said, now, thou, he said, blessed are they who do hunger, thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. And then he went on from there to say, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Amen. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake, don't come back to church after you hear that. Don't you dare come back because somebody speak against you. Amen. These two beautiful young ladies will tell you. I mean, people have talked about you, right? You have. Even if you don't say yes, they have, haven't they? Because you're beautiful. So don't take offense. They're only jealous over you. And you're taking offense because God makes you so beautiful. Boast on it. The more people talk against you, is the more you should rejoice because it is to tell you that you are somebody. Britain will not make bombs or America to drop it in fortress cities like the Sahara, in, 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 in like places like the Sahara deserts. They are going to plan for fortress cities. The devil plan to destroy you because you are somebody. And rather than rejoice and honor God for making you who you are, you are taking offense. But come on with me, somebody. David in Psalm 42, he said, Has the heart panted after the water brooks? 
soul, my soul running after you, oh God. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. You can wait for Sunday morning. Hallelujah, somebody. When you will be up and doing for God. You don't know what I'm talking about. I am the son of a farmer. He used to do farming as well as the other works he used to do. And we used to have some cows. And in the heat of the day, when you untie those cows, it does not matter what you put before them. They are heading straight for the river. They're thirsty and you can tell. Don't mess about. And David said, just as how the heart running after the water brooks, so my soul running after you. If you, make, if you get this message today, you'll never, ever be late for church again. Nobody say amen. You run, you run, you run for God and see if he won't run for you. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Glory. 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 It was not designed for you to be so sad. It's designed to bless you. Praise God, somebody. Hallelujah. You run for God and see if he won't run for you. As I told you, and I'm saying now and I'm closing, I came to Jesus and I saw a lot of things. I've never been upset in the world as I was upset by people in the church. But I wasn't here for people. Thank God I came because I met Jesus and he made a difference. And I didn't understand what the writer meant when he said, I heard the voice of Jesus said, come unto me and rest. Lay down, thy weary ones lay down, thy head upon my breast. Hallelujah. I came to Jesus as I was, weary man, worn and sad, but I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. Hear me, saints, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Eat of me. Glory. When he told them this message, when he gave them this message, 60 walked away from him. So I won't be surprised if some of you are saying it was too boring and dead today, I'm not coming back. 60 went away from him. He said to the other 12, will you go too? He said, whom should we go? Too, but because you have the word of eternal life. I'm sure if I say to you here today, every one of you here who can give a thousand pounds, give me a thousand pounds, and by next week you're going to have a mansion in London or somewhere else. My God, you, oh, what a blessing. Yay, get blessed. But then in the middle of the week, you receive a notice of eviction from where you're going. Call back the church and say it wasn't true. The blessing is to get to know your God for yourself. The blessing is to be able to shine when nobody else is shining with you. The blessing is to be able to love when nobody is loving you. The blessing is to be able to go for God when nobody else is going with you. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise today. I know him. When you know that you know that you know your God for yourself. It makes a difference. This thing is causing a problem. Amen. Hallelujah. So this hymn said, I heard the voice of Jesus said, 
Amen. I am this dark world's light. Look unto me. Thy morn shall rise. Thy morn shall rise. And all thy days be bright. I looked to Jesus. And I found in him my stars on my son. Hallelujah. The traveling days are done. In that light of life I walk. The traveling days are done. The verse went on to say, Amen. I came to Jesus. And I drank. Glory to God, somebody. I drank of that. Thank you. The devil is a liar, you know. You know that, don't you? And his mother in law as well. Amen. I, I, I drank of that life-given stream. My thirst was quenched. My soul revived. And now I live in him. How many of you here today love God? Can I see your hand? You love him. Oh, come on, Shando, my Sunday. Hallelujah. Yes, son of God. Last week I heard of a son. Last year or so, he buried his father. Last week he went. Called from London, came last week. Young lady down there, great potential. She's going into politics. She was running in our area to be the MP. Never felt too well, so they rushed out to the hospital. And uh, on Thursday, I heard they're about to take off the ventilators. Received a message from Jamaica last night. And uh, three more days every week is locked down. People are cornered. They have their backs against the walls. But God showed me something that the church is going to be the answer. Can I tell you something? I told them that in the past in I had, that the God said the church had the answer. And I'm telling you this, and it's not just for platitude's sake. Oh, you know that we are in the end time, don't you? You think so, don't you? But I tell you what, he's not coming back for a week and back boneless church. Is coming back for a church that is alive, a church on fire, a church that is really striving. Thank you, sir. But I tell you more than this, God's people who are here today need to hear this. You need to get hungry for God because you are here today. There are people who are going to come because of pressure, but you came today because you love him. Bow your heads with me. Hallelujah. Bless God Almighty, somebody. Bless him, somebody. I came to Jesus, but I didn't just come to him. But I came and I drank. Hallelujah, somebody. I drank. I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched. My soul revive. Thank God Almighty. And now I live in Him. I have a hope. I have a hope. I have a hope that though the outer man perish, but the inward man is renewed daily by the grace of God. 
bow your heads with me today. Glory somebody. Glory somebody. Glory somebody. Glory somebody. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come on to me. Rest. And rest. Lay down. Lay down thy weary ones. Lay down thy head. Thy no head upon. upon my breast. Yes, I can. I can. that you're hungry to go to heaven to have eternal joy and be with Jesus Christ oh you know that there's a Christless hope of eternal darkness Hallelujah. and I'll I have seen it happen to many people who have big plans and the plans never never generated too much but God has given you this word today as a revelation that he loves you. Can I see some the hands of some people today that you feel you need God, you're hungry for him. Just lift them hands. I pray for you today. You need God. God bless that hand. God bless those hands. God bless those hands. Anybody else today feel hungry, just hungry. That's it, man. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands. Yes, God bless you, son. God bless you. Amen. My, 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 my eyes are on you, son. Stand, son. You lifted your hands. You'll be the first one to come today. Come, man. Come. 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 Son, so just stand right there, sir. Thank you. Now, other hands are lifted. Will you stand? Those who lifted your hand, just stand. Stand where you are today. God bless you. Amen. Come. You lifted your hands. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Will you just take one? That God bless you at the back there, sir. Now, thank you. Now, can I just ask you to come? Just come, sir. Come. Come, ma'am. Come. 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 Just come. That's what it's for. You're hungry. hungry. 
I'm only just giving a command because I'm under commission. Like I said about the Tuesday night prayer meeting, I'm under command and I'm hoping the ushers are hearing me. That I'm saying to the congregation that God knows this is, this is something that you need to hear. That we want to start our service at 11. By the grace of God, we have people coming. And when the time of prayer, people don't move. God is saying, he told me this morning, he said, we must give him reverence. And sometimes our very movement restrict the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And those people who are in leadership, I'm asking you to make sure those people in your care know that they must reverence the Lord. I'm not getting an amen for this. But God is saying, you must begin to get hungry for him. If he has to do something to make you get hungry, he will do it. But you must remember, he wants to fill you up. You are standing at the altar today. It's not the best message that you have heard. I know you have heard some nice, smoothing talks. But God said to tell you today, two roads are before you. You must pick the choice. It's hell, it's heaven. I mean, your daddy is still a young man, much younger than me, and he's gone. And I'm telling you that it's paramount to know that you are ready when Jesus comes where you are going. And we have to get hungry, really hungry. And then we are going to be filled. I tell you something, come here quick, mom. Come, come, quick, 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 quick here. Hallelujah. Now, now hear this. Mom here is never done. Maybe she's done days of fasting, just days or just day and days. But when she got hungry for the Holy Ghost, she went on 40 days of fasting. On the end of the 40 days, right under there, God gave her the Holy Ghost. Thank you, ma'am. You need to get hungry. This message today has so much faults in it, and you will find them. But if you're really hungry for God, you're going to eat what is yours, and you are going to be filled. And there's no devil that is going to have power over you. Because God is controlling your life. Hold up your hands with me, church. You know what I'm talking about. Hold up your hands. Here God has revealed love, this love that the altar. The altar isn't going to be big enough to take people that's coming. That's what the Lord showed me. Hallelujah. Just as how they were running for the plane in Afghanistan. So they're going to be running to the altar. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. You're going to come and your seats will be gone. Amen. 
You don't know if Missionary Jordan is she there? Missionary Jordan there? Amen. Missionary Jordan, will you come? Can you come nearer to me, ma'am? I want everybody to be praying for her. I saw you this morning. Can you come? Okay. Amen. Because the church is going to be praying with me for her. Amen. Hallelujah. And I found the amen in a hymn. I stand, my son, my son, in that light of life. I walk, and glory to God. Thank you, friends at the altar. It is 1960 that I gave my life to the Lord. Before every single one of you at the altar here was born. And if I have to do it again, I'll do the same thing. Daughters, sons, but I'll do it much earlier. It's a serious time with God. Every person today, I'm not going to hold you back at the altar, who needs prior healing. God said you're going to see miracles before the preacher even starts to speak when you get hungry for him. You're going to see signs and wonders. Anybody who needs a miracle today in your life, just join this prayer line quickly for me. You need a miracle. Just come out quickly. You know what God has said to you. Come quickly. I want to pray for you right now. You need a miracle. You need a miracle. You need something special from the Lord. Come quickly. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Amen. You just come. Just come quickly. You need, you need, you need God to do something for you. Hallelujah. You just come and stand here today. Vamos, Shando. Hey, my Savior, my God. Yes, put the things out that she sits there. Hallelujah. You know you need something from God. Get hungry, get hungry. Get hungry again for him. Amen. Get hungry, get hungry. Oh, you know who you are. You know who you are. You know who you are. Come quickly, come quickly. I'm just going to do the one o'clock prayer. As you come for the one o'clock prayer, I pray for you. Just get hungry for God. Amen. This one o'clock prayer, you're going to be at the altar. And as it's touch one o'clock, I'm going to stop because I'm going to pray for you at one o'clock today. Amen. You know there is a God and you know he loves you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Nobody moves again. It's one o'clock now. And I just want to close off at one o'clock. And I'm asking those of you for salvation today. Please, please fear not. Fear not. But pray this prayer with me at this one o'clock, Father in heaven. This day, I heard your word. I believe your word. I turn my back on all of my sins. I denounce the devil. Satan is no longer my master. Jesus Christ. The son of the living God, he is my Lord and my master. And I promise you, Father, as long as I live, I will serve you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, I am saved by your power divine. I am saved through your love sublime. My life now is sweet. My joy is complete. For I am saved. 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 God bless you. Just keep standing. And I, before you leave today, every one of you who came to the altar, the missionary is going to take you into one of these rooms, spend five minutes with you, maybe less, give you a Bible, a book, and maybe some of you need fear to go back to where you come from. Maybe you're, you don't have enough money 
Whatever you need, she will talk with you, but we are here to help you. Those of you who came today because you were hungry, hungry for more of God, more of his healing power, more of his love, more of his anointing. Father, you gave me the word to tell your people that only those who are hungry should come to the table because they are the ones who are going to be filled. I know not one under the hearing of my voice today will go back home empty. But this revelation, Father, you will deal with us and deal with us that we may be able to share it in love. That if we want you to run for us, we must begin to run for you. If we want us, oh God, you to bless us, we must begin to bless others. And if you want us to love us, then we must begin to love others. Father, in Jesus' name, let the love that you have shown on Calvary be in every heart today. And not one person will leave this altar without being the person you want them to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And loved ones, I close my eyes. Please just keep your heads bowed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, salvation is not by feelings. I never felt a thing when I gave my life to Jesus. But when I gave my testimony that I had given my life to Christ, that was the first time I felt a transformation. With the heart you believe, with the mouth you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord. Not just as Savior, but as your Lord. I commend you to God today in Jesus' name. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And my God, put some oil on a missionary there for me. And then with church, point your hands at her. I, I, I know that God has a plan. And the enemy determined to fight her health. But from this day, we command healing and blessing, ma'am, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Now, please go back. Those of you who are going with the missionary, then they'll do that now. But then we're going to have some announcements, and I want you to hear them quickly before the benediction is pronounced. So will you kindly just come? Hallelujah. Come, come, come before we yes who's going to do this amen hallelujah will you take those can, young ones for me and then thank you very much sir you keep the keep, as soon as this blessing is announcement and we're going to be praying for brother Carlton and his, and his lovely wife amen. praise God um, I'm just going to give you the notices. If anybody has come and they haven't got a notice sheet, can you please take a notice sheet as you leave today? Because I'm only going to give you a few notices. Um, on Monday um, is the funeral of Mr. Andrew McClary, um, Monday the 23rd of August at 12 noon. Um, on Thursday the 9th of September at 12 noon is the funeral for Mrs. Doreen Dufus. Um, some of you might, might know her as Lowton. Next Saturday at 7.30 p.m., there's a baptismal service. Um, and on Bank Holiday Monday, um, there's a trip to Skegness. If you can please speak to Sister Marcia, Sister Stephanie, or Brother James. On Saturday, the 18th of September, there's an AGM at 12 noon to 2 p.m. And also, Sister Millicent is looking for volunteers to help to organize the Macmillan Coffee Morning um, and that's going to be held on the 25th of September. All the other notices you will find in your notice sheet. The weekly meetings continue as normal, and our evening service tonight is at 5.45 to 8 p.m. God bless you. God bless you. Stand with me now, saints, as we go. Can you put a couple, will you please come where is Sister Rose is? Yes? Is she there? Come quickly. Come, come, come to the altar. And um, I wanted to point out this couple for me. 
Amen. Thank God Almighty. Thank you. Father, you have kept them. You brought them together as one. And you are keeping them as one. Thank you for good health and strength. And thank you for provision in every area of their lives. You who have started this good work in them, Lord, you are able to carry it out to the very end. Thanks today, hallelujah, for allowing us to know this couple. Oh God, as part of the ministry, may the light of your love shine over them, upon them and within them perpetually, that they will never be short of any good things in Jesus' name. And the people say amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a shout of praise, saints. Hallelujah. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate him. Come back tonight and share your testimony in Jesus' name. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Everybody say amen. amen. And God bless you. Go, good walk, good God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Amen.